Now, let's look at the state of the nation holistically. There are a whole lot of lessons to learn, isn't it? For the last days, on the first day of August, there's been a lot of turbulence, isn't it? That have, has affected, the federal government says, Nigeria has lost over 500 billion in uh, investment or in times of what could have come out as trade in the country, but due to the nationwide August protest of uh, and bad governance. But tonight, let's take a, a step backward and learn one or two things about where we got to where we are today, some kind of uh, dialectal narratives that have also come into the conversation. Tonight, I'm being joined by a scholar, Professor Udenta Udenta. He joins us live here in Abuja. So it's good to see you again, Prof. <laughs> it's a pleasure to be with you. Thank you so Once much. More. Indeed. I appreciate it. Good. Uh, let's look at it. Um, a big lesson is in it for the nation, not only for the government, for every individual, for every citizen, and every leader in this country about what happened from the 1st of August. Don't you think? That's when they call stock taking. You take stock because after a while, if you have a business that you're growing, you find out that the business is doing well, whether you're doing more of loss or more of gain. What's your balance sheet giving you? Then you will re-strategize as a company. A nation is like a company of a sort. It's a corporate entity with a government in place at the federal and some national levels. So when you find this moment of national you know, rupture occurring, it means that social forces have been unleashed. And this unleashment of forces didn't occur overnight, not even within the tenable presidency. Mm. It's been there brewing for years, if not decades. But when then so the these forces, government just walked of into, course, the, yeah, into it, the quagmire. It's actually what, call, what I call intensification of the contradictions. Mm. But we are intensifying it. And this government is actually rather heightening it. That intensification of contradictions that will unleash social forces. If you look around, Shane, coming here, it was embarrassing that queues are in the filling stations. And petroleum products are not even available. Many are buying at 1,200 on the well, roadside. It's actually concerning, isn't it? Uh, that, I mean, it's worrisome that the NMPCL is not saying anything about Absolutely. it. Absolutely. So it's kept mute. This is part of the social force. What is causing it? What, we I mean, not, we're not, not hearing. We're not, not getting any explanation. And, and I'm not sure the federal government is, in fact, talking I'm not about it. expert in that sector. But the point I'm making is that these are indicators mm. that the system is choked up. And when it's choked up, it means that forces are beginning to brew all over the place. So first August was one in a series of, for me, a long stretch of eruptions that must be managed for the country to really get its bearing and develop. So we could see more of our decision. These things are scientific. When you list social forces, if you can't contain hunger, constrain poverty, you can reduce insecurity, people can find petroleum product, because at, at cut through prices, if they find there's a sense of angst and discontent in the land, and this is not being ameliorated, much more convulsive processes and, and situations will be unleashed further down the line. So it's a lesson for the government, not just at the national level. Mm. It's a lesson for the government, even at the subnational level. But it does look like the state government and the local government wanted to shield themselves. Or it looked like it was a problem with the federal government. And some of us actually uh, highlighted the fact that government is government at all strata every government had to come out to defend the fact that there is hardship there is hunger in the let land so this is not a tunable let, government let me, alone, let me give an example it? let me give an example the council of state made the other day and gave a vote of confidence on the president on the president and his government the council of state as powerful as that body is because he's an adversary body made up of a club of former presidents and heads of state and so on as powerful as that entity is in terms of the people that populate it, yeah. it is not their business to give out of confidence. One way or the other, it's their business that assess the situation in the country and advise the president. But of course, the confidence is secure from the people. That's where the mandate they right from, not from the council. So it is a poverty that's going to give vote of confidence when it is reduced. It is going to be hunger that will give vote of confidence when it is reduced. But only products will give vote of confidence when it is reduced. And we hope the government is going to work extra hard to get those things done well. I'll give you another example. Based on the point you raised, the governor of Bauchi State, Bala Mohamed, for example, spoke passionately and said, not only the president, but every one of us political leaders should be held accountable for what went wrong. Bauchi indeed put a robust anti-protest mechanism. But on the day, the people erupted and the governor didn't say, oh my God, this picture is not as pretty as we thought. Mr. President, are you hearing it? We are at the subnational level. We're feeling the pitch and feeling the heat. 
Therefore, we need to work extra hard to regain the confidence of the people. So nobody can people. dock any longer. It can dock. Yeah, you yes. have to face the reality. Whenever you I can dock and see what the state governors. The are. eruptions is going to catch up with everybody. Absolutely. See what the state governors are doing. They are rapidly now accelerating the democratization processes at the local government level because of the Supreme Court. Reading. At least four or five that, five states. More than, more than, than that. That means that means when they have those elected officers, both the chairman and the councillors, they to occupy their own democratic position to say. Hello, the people who put you in are watching you. The same way they're watching the governors and watching the president. Everybody's going to be under intense scrutiny. The sky is falling. It's going to fall on anyone. Everybody said. So the most important thing is not to say PDP or APC or NMPP or Labour Party. It is the business of the political class to ensure there is public order and social stability. But it is the business of the president and his team to organize the political order. And I said in my piece, which is threaded everywhere, that yeah. the president is operating from the margins and periphery of the political state. That means he must move into the center. In 1990, Basanjo won decisively and said, I can't even govern alone, even with my victory. I need the two other parties, AD and APP, to come and help rebuild this country already choked down by convulsions. And then he set up the office of the inter-party affairs appointed the chairman of APC, APP. Then incorporated Uncle Bola again, remember very well, mm -hmm. as attorney general, yeah. he brought in Adeluma Adesanya, Adesanya mm -hmm. daughter, brought in Shata of APP, what mm -hmm. Ezife of AD into the cabinet to give that sense of elite consensus, which is the first step in building national consensus. So we, we need a government of national unity. This government is, is that narrow. What we need? It's, it's narrow. It's not even not the, in the classic sense of government of national unity. It's got a mandate of a sort. That means he could govern the way he likes, but nobody wants to leave office as a president broken and forgotten by history. You need to leave a legacy. The way to do it is to engage, embrace the political class, embrace the political state. You don't see the president doing any of that. Now. I don't know what it is. He or people around him. It is important that he begins to listen to the people and listen to even voice of patriots all over the country. If you look at the coalition that brought him to power in 19, in 2023, that coalition is even weakening. If you look at the cast of the people and the geography, of that coalition is weakening. That means he needs to rebuild his political, you know, muzzle of Lova. It happened to Clinton in 1992. He won decisively. By 1994, his presidency had virtually crumbled and collapsed. Mm -hmm. He had to reinvent it in 1996. And his party could not even hold, they couldn't retain so power. If the Republican abso 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 took over, in, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so it. if you have the president who is operating as if policies will help the day, Policies could help if the policies are populist. They're not populist. You can't remove subsidies. Unfortunately, there are, those, there, are those pro, there are those who believe uh, uh, that, look, our nation needs some very strong policies, albeit very unpopular, uh, that the policies that will take us to the next level will not be popular policies. They, it will take strong, decisive leaders to be able to make those they, policies. They, they, Unfortunately, it seems that that's what Bola they, is they, stepping into. They, they, the contradiction there is this. If you want to, embrace populist domain, the people you must, in essence, enunciate policy programs or prescriptions that is going to sit well with them. Whether it works in the short term or long term or mid term, mm. it can then isolate the lead and say, I'm working with the people because that is where my power lies. Well, any, anyways, yeah. their, party but is, then, their party's philosophy yeah. is worth hearing. But then, it's the left of the center. Yeah, sure. So when we imagine that those policies should be Absolutely. Be popular but then, people. if you don't, if you don't embrace the elite and alienate them, and the new liberal economic model from the Western world, from Washington, and London, it's the one driving you. You neither have the elite to compensate for the lack of popular support. You neither have the people because the policies are perceived to be anti-people. That means you're caught in between. You cannot, even if I take a view that you need bold, vigorous, transformative, difficult policies to move a country. If you don't get the politics right, you can't get the economics right. What he's tried to do in the past one is to get the economies right, but abandoning the political space and the political state to whoever I don't know. That is why everybody who is part of the contestation of power a year ago are rioting, political riot. I think of the PDP doesn't seem to understand, I mean, believe that this government protects the interests of its constituency in power and politics. PDP is all over the place. One person did something. You need to bring them and tamp down the rhetoric. It's your job as the president to do so. And people who are around you as handlers must understand that he has to pierce through his scaffold of a narrow terrain of power within the villa to embrace the outer mm. world. That's what I'm coming. So you need a strong political advisor. 
I don't even that will stand in the gap. Remember which, what happened when the governor of Bauchi State spoke. Mm -hmm. The message from there, they, you know, that, that Dogara and the rest of said, "Oh, he's attacking the president." Oh, he's like, "No, it is not." Loyal opposition means. I saw. Was, I saw your. Me, I saw your piece about peace. when you talk about the Dar tribe. I, it's important because if you speak as a governor of a state, Bauchi in this instance, they said, and my people are hurting, and they're pointing fingers at me. They're pointing fingers at you too. You should construe that as tough love. The governor loves really the system, loves the state to be stable, the state to be cohesive, to be coherent. But pointed out powerfully that the president and his team need to sit up the way the governors themselves need to sit up too. When we sit up at the national, subnational, local level, when the people engage with us and we understand their pain and work towards ameliorating their pain, this country we see moments of growth and progress. Prof, what, what you're saying in essence is that whatever we saw. From the 1st of August, it's just a child's play. It's just a tip of her iceberg. And that we, should, we could see more of agitation we we, if immediate and urgent steps don't are want not taken. To. You know what we don't want to? As patriotic forces, myself inclusive, as one of the founding fathers, if I'm not too old to be, if I'm not old enough to be a father, a founding uncles of this republic, we paid our dues from six time detention under Abacha. So National Security was one of the leading parties then. Conferences upon conferences across the world and here to build the infrastructure of democratic governance that many are tearing down. It's a duty to hold this baby firm, no matter how the baby is full of what. As I said, the first one at the political level, convene a meeting of the top leaders of this country, the party chairman of these four parties, the National Assembly, NAS, both the, both the minority and majority, the chairman of Governors Forum, National, German PDP Governors Forum, bring them together in the conclave, in the villa, shut the door, and tell yourself the political truth. No one party can run this country alone. No one faction of the political leader can run this country alone. Read and inanimate the office of the special adversary inter party affairs. Let it be almost a cabinet level position. Bring an inclusive political person there. Who understands the terrain and is very easy with you, easy with Atiku, easy with your P2B, easy with Kwanwaso, and filling that gap. Let it be the one to do the legwork. Politics will continue, contestations will continue, policy differences will continue, but we done with amity and sense of conviviality. Well, let me bring this for, uh, patriots. Uh, the Patriots right, is a group, of course. That's and a different thing from Nigerian yeah, yeah, Patriots. Yeah, absolutely, yeah, the Nigerian Patriots. This one is a group. Well, that's what I'm part of the that group. Patriots, anyway. yes, yeah. the Patriots, yes. So, uh, and we've seen the, the Professor Wabweze. Uh, In the past, uh, yes, FRA the past, and so FRA Williams and the likes. But they've gone, led by uh, um, Emeka and Yoko, mm -hmm. a very well-respected Nigerian. And it, they are asking is very also important. A lot of people have debated it. For any constitution. For any constitution. Birthing a new constitution, do you think that is well, at the at the at the level of a, of a powerful political or nationalistic rhetoric is wise a wise call. But unfortunately there was a closure in 1998 with the death of Abacha and the death of Abiola who won election and they coming together for uh, coming to power for Salami Abubakar. Abubakar met the leaders of Nadeko and said, go run election. We said we don't need the election. We don't need the constitution. We need the sovereign national conference. We need to restructure this country. He said, my people in Nabi do not know what you're talking about. They think you want to break up the country, but if you run an election, you win. Run on that premise. We went to form a party, AD. They gave us a constitution. We blindly accepted that constitution. Thinking that in the future date, in the, on the, term, in, in, on the term, in future date, we could revisit that. But the closure has occurred because this president has been sworn in and parliament has been sworn in. To bring a new constitution, you must therefore do two things. Obey the laws of constitutional gravity. That means go to the text of the existing constitution and amend it as specified by it. Or disobey the law. That means destroy the constitutional state. Ujimoro did it in 1992. I will not say on, in public, on air. He what won happened? He won. The consequences. He won and didn't want the constitution. He needed a better constitution. We know what he did. Mm. In essence, to have a new constitution is not a call of the president. The president can only persuade. At the end of the day, the parliament must, invade, must intervene. But does this parliament look like the kind I'm of parliament? Saying, that I'm can saying that, that as passionate as the call by the patriots, I'm part of. Maybe it's rhetorical. Because at the end of the day, there are three ways you can, you can get a new constitution. You must dislodge the existing democratic order by two popular insurrection, displace it from this place and say, there's vacuum. And then you now bring in a 
a conference with constitutive powers. Two, he can do what Fujimori did, which I will not say on air. Number three, is to persuade the president that they are trying to do, that will persuade the parliament and persuade regional communities and nationality groups from ACF, not the Elders Forum, to PANDEF, Afeniferi, must come together because the senators and reps bear loyalty substantially to them, not just to the parties. If they say no to the president and tear that document called the new constitution and use it as a toilet paper, so be it. To overwhelm it means you must overpower the constitutional state. Anyway, there are those who say must... we've had constitutional, uh, constitutional conferences in 2005 under our passenger. Uh, Jonathan did another in 2014. It was not, it was not going to work. And, yeah. this president is, and, you, and as I said, with even a weakened power base, mm -hmm. which I'm stressing on A for the president to understand he has a weak political infrastructure he's running with. He needs to rebuild it. He can't even go to him in a state with the north. Apparently, political not seem to be rioting. He find that the political east is still not on board. He find that the south south seems to be neither here nor there. Okay, you need to have all these people politically on board. The part that part of presidential power we are projecting. Mm. When they're on board, and then the patriots come with the with the origin for a new constitution, then it is possible that the president can flex his muscle. Give me a and use his capital. Yeah. To Give get me a moment. Let, let's take our first break on the program. But when we return, I'll be getting the closing argument from Professor Odenta Odenta on the state of the nation. There's some very strong advisory coming from one man who has perhaps seen it all in this fourth republic. And when he speaks sometimes, a whole lot of wisdom comes out of him and experience too. Plus, he's a scholar and he's done a lot of research about the way and the scientific manner in which our nation can politically and diplomatically get out of this quagmire. We'll be right back with Professor Odenta Odenta. Thank you so much, everyone, for staying with us. Professor Odenta Odenta has been speaking, and more of what he's saying tonight is the way forward for Nigeria. It seems to be a, a, a political crossroad in this country. Political crossroad, everyone will say. But, but we have the economic problem. We have a social and social sure. problem. Yeah, but the pol politics of everything is at the center of our problem. If you get the politics right, we may be on the way into uh, Uhuru. Well, Prof, how do we get there? Well, what must the president do now? I've simply, you know, specified in a programmatic manner the steps and procedures. Convene. Because his speech didn't contain the broadcast, no proclaiming, he didn't make any presidential proclamations, no convening orders, no presidential directives. It's now time, it's not too late. The first convening directive is to engage the political leaders. And I've named them in my piece, which is all about it. Mm -hmm. Bring in the chairman of the four parties, leading parties, the ruling party, PDP, NMPP, and Labour. Bring in their presidential candidates, whatever they are, go find them. Whether they are insulting you, you are the president. Look for them and engage them. Stop to call bring, yes, bring in the governors through the chairman, the mm -hmm. governor's forum, and chairman, PDP, governor forum. Within the them, they have virtually the entire state, minus Apuga and Labour, one one here and there. When you have them, get the leadership of NAS. They should be eight in the Senate, eight in the reps. Sit down and work out the procedure of engaging the political state. That makes you recalibrate your cabinet, recalibrate it. Bring in people from outside, not just the loyalists. Bring in from different civil society. Bring in from opposition parties. It could be tokenism, but it works sometimes in the big consensus. Mm -hmm. Secondly, office of inter-party affairs. Then civil society is key. Then I saw it in 2007. If you don't engage the civic center, they too are destroyed from the political class, including the president and the governors. Bring them, that's why I named solid people from the civic world domain, who the president should call and say, we need to have a presidential council on civil society. And it's going to mainstream civil society concerns and strategic you know, you know, vision into governance programming. They need to have another advisor on civic relations. You mentioned this politically sophisticated mechanism. Well, easy. It's easy to do. We can do it. Well, do you, do, 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 you've worked with President Tunumbo before. Well, I have. Do you think that that political sagacity can be so uh, calm in, in, to, to absorb this kind of what? advisory that you, this, the, 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 this, this trajectory that you're talking the about? The strength I know about him 26 odd years ago, 25, 24 odd years ago, is that a fervent mind and ability to engage, roll the sleeve, let there be argument and deputations. Let us talk. 
Whatever it takes to reach consensus will win. But over the years, as expected, he wasn't just a governor over the years. He became a former governor, became a leader of a political force in the Southwest, a member of the National Political Leading Group, you know, helped to facilitate the president coming to power. Now he's the president himself. A lot happens. The human, can they be transformed into something beyond the human? That means, I don't know, whether it's essential that he still have the same passion for debate, for contestation of ideas, as he used to have. He should have it now. And if you think this antidote will work? If he works, if he works reasonably, the political, the, the economic dimension is going to flow with it. All right. If it doesn't work, the country is in serious trouble in dire straits. Professor Odenta, Odenta, thank you so much indeed. We are at a crossroad. We need a direction and we need a leader that will be firm enough. And I dare say, anyone that makes those tough decisions and get Nigeria working will be a legend, a hero Absolutely. that will never, never be forgotten. Absolutely. But thank you so much for your insight. It's a pleasure, Ishio.